somebody with me uh, on the first show uh, is a fellow host uh, by the name of Miss Solaris Blue Raven. She is also a published author, public speaker, timeline astrologer, MT healer, remote viewer, clairvoyant, and assessment specialist in psychotronic warfare, synthetic telepathy, and covert technology. She's a world-class natural psychic and cosmic advisor. Miss Blue Raven has been a test pilot for covert technology and has professional background in surveillance. She investigates global anomalies in addition to her current research. Her expertise in artificial intelligence interface is well-respected in the scientific and mystical community. She's also a professional writer with several books, on covert technology and psychotronic warfare, which you can find on Amazon.com or Author House Books. Uh, Transmutation Through Ascension from 2004, Eye of the Remote, Black Operations in Areas Beyond 52 from 2008, Mr. Sun and the Halloween Ball from 2010, programmed by Deception, Eye of the Remote Series 2 from 2012, and One Million Miles Till Midnight recently made available. Uh, also, Miss Blue Raven has a DVD com- uh, documentary called Eye of the Road, A Disclosure of Covert Technology, which is available on her website, Na- Night Shadow Anomaly Detectives. And it is my honor and privilege to welcome Solaris Blue Raven to the show. Uh, Happy New Year. How are you? Happy New Year, Mr. Rowe. It's a pleasure to be on tonight. Thanks for having me on. I'm yeah. doing well. How are you doing? Oh, I'm, I'm doing good. Starting a new, okay. new year off right, uh, I suppose. <laughs> so. I hope. Yeah, yeah, I know. <laughs> so yeah you know you gotta you, we gotta keep a uh, a positive attitude and I, I think even though you know we turn on the the media and we find all kinds of things to go oh my goodness and we'll probably be talking about some of that tonight you know still at the at the end you know i i do have an optimistic outlook mm-hmm. oh i do too i mean it's all rifting right now but through all this debris we're going to get through it we just have yeah. to get out the surfboard so um yeah tonight um you, you, you know, this is kind of casual, so uh, we can talk about anything you, you'd like. Um, I I'd, I'd just kind of want to give you the floor and give you a chance to, uh, to let us know what's, um, what's on Solaris Blue Raven's mind when we go into 2017. Well, 2017 is, is more uh, political than anything else. You know, I've, I, you know where I've been with the covert technology, but right now I'm looking at this timeline and I'm just, uh, just running really positive energy for Donald J. Trump, president-elect, to get in there without any issues. Um, very concerned about what's happening here, all the, all the craziness, all the, the race kind of uh, inciting that's going on and everything else that's happening. So there are a lot of things that are concerning me, but mainly the sabotage coming from D.C. and Obama, which, you know, you, obviously you've paid attention to my witch files and the things that I put out there. I, I get very concerned about him because I just don't trust him. You know, I know he always has something up his sleeve, and I think that these guys are just, uh, they're not done, you know. So we have to keep a good eye on them. Yeah, I um, I saw some articles where it said that the, the 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 moving vans are are at the White House, you know, and and they're going through all the motions. And we we keep thinking, you know, I have been, I, I wouldn't say almost well, almost on the edge of my seat because I have a lot of um, newfound respect actually for Donald Trump, which has surprised the hell out of me. Um, before he ran, before I started investigating this guy, Donald Trump, I really didn't give to sense about him. He was, you know, this million billionaire real estate business guy and has nothing to do with me. And he does a few TV show things. Okay. He's kind of a celebrity, but still uh, it's not my world. And then he jumps into politics, which affects everybody, you know, and eventually that is my world. So now I'm thinking, okay, what, what is this, all this rabble about this guy? Because when he first, I actually didn't pay too much attention when he first started running. I was sort of indifferent. A lot of people were like, oh, he's a joke. It's a joke thing. And at first, when I first kind of got wind of it, I was like, okay, maybe it is kind of a joke. Donald Trump's jumping in there to add a little flair, give it a little Hollywood pizzazz, you know, because the elections are going to be boring because ah, Hillary's, you know, yeah, I never trusted her. The whole time, I never liked Hillary. Just that's mm-hmm. my own personal thing. And uh, just as, you know how, Solaris, you can just meet somebody and, and right off the bat, you don't know why, you just don't like them. <laughs> oh, absolutely. It's called radar. <laughs> yeah. And and so I had that feeling, even though I never met her personally, I could just, you know, it, it, I guess it was so powerful, the stench of her dishonor that mm-hmm. it just permeates through the TV screen. So anyway, that being said, I thought, OK, you know, this guy, Donald Trump, and then he started blowing away his competition one by one. And so then I started looking into him. Uh, the, the closer he got to actually being a serious uh, individual that's going to, to take the White House. And 
and for some reason, the minute I started investigating him, I knew he was for real and that he wasn't alone, you know, that he got something behind him, uh, which led me to kind of come to my own conclusions of what factions he's representing and, and the whole backstory on that. But, um, yeah, I, I do, uh, have a little bit of, uh, oh, like I was saying, I'm almost on the edge of my seat because we were thinking, well, you know, they're going to rig the election first. Okay. Now maybe this guy's going to make, oh no, they're going to rig the election. She's going to make it. Okay. That didn't work. Now they're going to come up with some excuse to take away the presidency before the electoral college votes. You know, they're going to change. Nope. They got through that. Uh, now it's the Russians are hacking. The Russians are hacking. Uh, it seems like there nobody's really buying that one. Um, now I guess Obama's coming up with something. With I don't know if you've heard this, but supposedly they want to dismiss fifty electoral voters from the electoral college and declare it null because they didn't live in the right districts. Have you heard this? Uh, I have not heard that, and that pisses me off. Yeah. I, I just heard it like uh, about an hour before airtime, and mm. I haven't had a chance to really research it. But from what I've heard, they were talking about this on mainstream news, and they were saying, well, if they can uh, declare that the electoral voters were – it's null, then it has to go to the Congress or whatever. And then they're going to pick between um, – you know, I think it's, uh, well, whoever the top three are, whatever the rules are, it might be Clinton, Trump, and maybe uh, uh, Colin Powell or whoever got the <laughs> next. This is interesting. And you know what's very, very interesting is that my producer over at KCOR, she has a lot of connections to the um, to the White Hats. And I'll tell you point blank, she mentioned this exact thing almost word for word prior to the election. Well, and the other thing now is she wants to sit on top of the – now, let's say that that doesn't go through, which I don't think that's going to have any water. The other thing that they were talking about, though, is having a, quote-unquote, congressional investigation or a hearing of some sort on the Russian influence of the elections. Now, I really don't think personally that they're going to – there's anything they can do that's going to stop – Trump from actually ascending and taking the White House on the 20th, like it says in the letter of the law, outside of something that we don't even want to, you know, think about, you know, that, that some of the things that they might pull off. Uh, right. Yeah, I agree. Well, you know, I mentioned it over and over again, and I still say it is that he needed an emergency transfer of power done prior to the uh, inauguration. We need to move quickly and we need to have him in there. And we need to, what I, in my opinion, I, I thought we could actually arrest Obama for treason. We have so much on him that yeah. can really put him behind bars. But why are they waiting? And another thing that concerns me, Mr. Rowe, is is the Navy. Um, what's going on? That's that's just like sitting ducks. I am so concerned that we are just completely just down. I mean, our entire uh, grid system insofar as, I mean, I know we have electricity, but everything else, our defense system is down and he's doing it deliberately. And people aren't picking up on this. I know we are here, but it, that is very concerning to me. Now, yeah, I heard some rumor uh, that the Navy returned most of their uh, carriers, or all of them, due to the inability to keep them stocked with food um, for whatever reason, whether they're not able to buy locally or something. But the Navy would – I don't think that's a, a, a reason because there's – I think we could self-supply. We don't need to get food from some port somewhere, you know. I mean, so I, I don't believe that story, but that's one of the stories floating around. Um, and, and yeah, I mean, if we have to, I would take the third army and just open up the white house and take Obama out. Uh, apparently he might not even be there, um, that he's already left the white house. So they're just, uh, going through the, the formalities, of uh, moving all of his stuff out. Um, that's interesting. You know what I've heard also, and I, I, this is from other people who say they have an access to, um, to the White House. But uh, but from what I understand that when people are moving, when a president is leaving, they wait until the day they leave and they actually bring in the van or whatever it is. And then they, it gives them like an hour between um, the transfer for people to leave and their, and everything to be moved, which sounds really strange, but that's what I've heard. So I can't really confirm it or otherwise, but that's what I've heard. So I was kind of confused when I saw the moving vans already. Um, that's kind of interesting if that's really the case, because from what I understand, that's not the case when they officially move. Correct me if I'm wrong, if anybody knows anything else, but this is what I've heard from somebody who's special forces related with DC. So, yeah, I mean, who knows how much uh, stuff they've, how much they customize it, you know? I mean, yeah. let's, <laughs> Obama's right. got all the statues in there or something. Well, you know, yeah, um, check his pockets, right? 
Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, I just, well, the, when the Clintons left, they stole the furniture and some of the stuff that had been, you know, as kind of sort of national treasures and they took them with them and uh, some of the stuff they gave back, but apparently not everything. Oh yeah. Well, you know, they've just completely destroyed this country. I mean, on so many different levels. That's why we're so glad to get rid of that legacy, that defective legacy of these people that have been nothing but corruption and an infestation of, of sickness to this whole land. You know, I'm, I'm so looking forward to um, President Trump getting in there. I really do have good a good vibration insofar as what's happening with him. And, you know, like I said, he's the spirit of America. He's the spirit of what we really need here in this country, especially with the way it's, you know, Obama has been such a bad role model for everybody. I mean, look at these kids that are acting up and behaving the way they are. And it's all about him inciting that to some degree because he started this years ago. Yeah. And, and th this administration is doing nothing but uh, fanning the flames and being an enabler for all of this complete, I mean, I, I hate to use the term left and right, but it's a simplistic term. I guess it's just as good as any, but this, mm -hmm. n this illogical way of behaving, I should say, you know, for, for, for people to have people that behave like infants in college that use, that are hypocritical in nature in just about everything where you know, oh, you can't have freedom of speech, and it's my freedom of speech to stifle yours, or I'm going to say F you and preach love at the same time. You know, and just the, the, that whole crazy climate of the changing of logic uh, and the way people process information that seems to be occurring in, uh, well, it's really occurring in the colleges, but I think even before that. Um, and I, I've done a show where, did you know that... Um, Common Core is actually funded by and linked to the Muslim Brotherhood? I am not surprised because it's the most illiterate system I've ever seen in my entire life. So that does not surprise me at all. Thank you for yeah. telling me. It, yeah. it, and you can easily find the information on this by Googling Common Core funding Qatar, Saudi Arabia. And it's part of a global initiative that, you know, under the guise of of uh, getting the test scores up and making everybody compatible and on the you know on the global stage to, for the the next you know just preparing our youth to be smarter and all that kind of crap. Um, this has been basically funded by Qatar, Saudi Arabia, and the lead players in this are directly linked and members of the Muslim Brotherhood, um, and that's why um, you have every once in a while a story will pop up. Sometimes, like on blacklisted news or whatever, you'll see a story that says, you know, of a mother or father that found their kid's homework and it's the Shahada of Islam or it's it's got, you know, it's something about Muhammad and, you know, it's something Islamic. And they kind of scratch their heads and go, what the heck is this doing in there? You know, and that's why they're they're sort of sneaking it in there. Mm -hmm. And this is grooming people to think in a slightly different way. At a young age. Mm -hmm. and, right. Social engineering, bottom line. And our students, or excuse me, our teachers, uh, a lot of them that are just trying to do the right thing, are just following the curriculum. They're just, you know, they're there for their paycheck, basically, and they like kids. Okay. They want to do the right thing. I mean, one of my friends is a teacher. And um, he, he said, yeah, you know, they, they give us a very strict uh, sort of you know, piece of, uh, we can only veer so far off the course. We can't go too far. We can't say certain things. And we, and there are some things that are required teaching. So mm -hmm. yeah, this common core curriculum. And then I saw something on the news the other night when talking about, oh yeah, so this nice lady, you know, yeah, you know, the common core and some states even get incentive from the government and by federal grants. And of course that's the bribe. Mm -hmm. And who's, who's not going to turn down, you know, a couple hundred million dollars and hey, it's no skin off your back. You got to, you know, take a little off the top for yourself, Governor. Pass the rest down the Department of Education. We'll get this Common Core thing in there. There's plenty of room, plenty of money. Your schools will feel a little bit better. You'll be with the program. How's that? Oh, yeah, there you go. Mm -hmm. Right. That's another thing that President Trump's going to get rid of is the Common Core. So once again, but you know, the, the Saudis have always had their hooks in, in D.C. That's the problem. They've always been there shadowing, even with uh, Obama there. You know, he was pretty much their protege to some degree. And of course, Clinton. I mean, that's the problem we're dealing with is the Saudis are, are they can't pull out. They're trying so hard to hold on to this country and invade it with this Islamic extremist agenda, as we all know, just like they're destroying Europe. So I'll tell you point blank, but they're in for a big ride because we're not going down without a huge fight. And I'm telling you that right now. And you know me, I, I am so fired up. Up. 
um, even with my last breath, you know, I, I just, I'm so fired up because I see all the mind games going on and I see him sabotaging from day to day to day, every day, you know, we look and we see, I mean, I follow Alex Jones and I follow a lot of different people and you always see what Obama's up to something. He's always doing something, you know? So yeah, it's very infuriating. And, and I think that people really need to, um, to wake up on a higher level. I know people wake up that tune into these stations, but I'll tell you point blank, man, they need to stop listening to CNN and MSNBC and all that crap. And I can't believe some of the propaganda that's coming out of there. Oh, yeah. You know, it, interestingly enough, um, I believe it's uh, Tucker Carlson, who is one of the only voices on mainstream, well, television that is, you probably hear that Harley going by. Go Speed Racer. <laughs> uh, Harley, yeah. Yeah, um, is Tucker Carlson has just gotten the 9 o'clock Pacific time, I believe, slot on Fox, which he's probably one of the only reasonable, honorable voices out there. Um, if you if you haven't seen some of his stuff on YouTube, you know, just put in Tucker Carlson and mm -hmm. he cracks me up because he'll have a guest on, whether it's Black Lives Matter and their crap or some, you know, Hillary person or whatever. And they're spewing ridiculousness. And, and Tucker will just sit there with his staring at them with this mouth open just a little bit like. Are you serious? You know, like, <laughs> OMG, are you saying? And it just, it's the funniest thing sometimes, especially when these people are, are spewing their crap. And it's uh, so hilarious. It seems like it's just getting easier and easier to call people on their bullshit sometimes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's very transparent. There's no doubt about it. You're seeing people for exactly what they are. And um, those who are in alignment with what we call the higher design work behind everything are usually the ones connected to Trump and the, this new wave of energy that's coming in. And the rest of them are just propaganda. But what I have noticed is that every time um, there's every time we address something that's corrupt over there in D.C., they try to bounce it back onto Trump, pretending that he's he's the problem when he's not. It's actually Obama who's really the cause and, of course, the Clintons and everybody else. So it's really interesting for me to watch this sociopathic kind of behavior where they're using this deflection and they're trying to attack Trump versus just accepting the fact that they're the problem and Trump isn't the problem. Trump's the solution to the equation. Yeah, I do believe, I truly think that um, he has pulled kind of a, a stealth maneuver. I, I, I don't think that this is something he pulled out of a hat, um, that mm -hmm. this has been planned for a long time. And and I, I think that this is a, a maneuver from uh, a, a better group of people, a more honorable group of people that are movers and shakers behind the scenes of the world. Mm -hmm. I totally agree. Well, everything he stands for is what we represent. I mean, I, I at least can I, I can relate to him. I can relate to everything he talks about, especially the anti-Islamic extremists. Everything that he's talking about, I can resonate with. So um, I see so much corruption and so many levels of corruption that he has to do a, a huge purge and clear everything out. And that's going to take some time. But if we get behind him, we can certainly get this done. But what bothers me is we have to get him in there. We've got to get him in there immediately. And that's why I say that the transfer of power, an emergency transfer of power, because Obama is already a treasonous piece of crap, we can get him arrested. We can prosecute him. I, I mean, I know we can do this. This isn't something that's a fantasy. It can be done behind the scenes. So, and that's why I always tell them, I mean, why are they just waiting and waiting and waiting until something what can happen to a point where they try to sabotage even, even further? We only have so many days left here. Yeah. So. I, I think the thing is, I think that they're the faction that's leaving that doesn't want to give up power has just enough positions and and one of the things to, to hold, you know, it's they're just like they've got just enough generals in the military as well. They have just enough folks and, and, and plenty in Congress and the Senate and, and in administrative positions. That's one of the things Obama has, is scrambling now. He's been playing golf and sitting on his ass most of the entire time he's been president and taking vacations. And now all of a sudden he's signing things to give, uh, you know, make this area a national monument and uh, put this thing under, you know, who knows, probably a UN biosphere. I think that's what it does. And also, you know, make another deal and sign a treaty and put the NDAA. Oh, and Christmas Eve, let's make sure and pass the uh, Anti-Propaganda Act and put it in a treaty or a, a, a North American Defense Authorization Act so that it has to ride through the entire fiscal year of 2017. Trump, I, I don't know if he has the power, even with an executive order, to say this NDAA thing ha is not, you know, kosher. I, I don't mm -hmm. think he can do that. Now, he can nullify the executive orders that Obama's put through. Uh, there's a lot of stuff. The nice thing, if he gets in power, is they've spent a long time, decades, um, 
giving the president more and more dictatorial powers, you know, more and more mm -hmm. ability. And now Trump gets the Ferrari. So yep. that's right. He can drive. <laughs> no doubt about that one. Well, you know what really concerns me also is, is all these borders being open for so long. He's allowed for an infiltration to such a level, the Obama administration, to a point where we have um, we have armies here. I mean, he's built himself an Islamic extremist army here. They, people haven't seen them yet in motion. They haven't been activated. They're here. We know they're here. And they've been they've been um, the FBI's confirmed a lot of their cells. Right. So this is another thing people need to take a look at, because this guy this is why I say nail him for treason. Nail that SOB for treason. Don't let him walk out of that White House just like he's done a great job applauding himself. You bust that SOB. And that's my, I'm telling you point blank, Mr. Rowe, this is what I want to see happen. It needs to happen. Uh, we need to set an example that people like him should not be doing what they're doing in the illusion of power. End of story. And he's gutted America and he's been trashing it for eight years. So he needs to be held accountable. And I get really fired up when I talk about this. I know you know that. But um, yeah, I want to see that guy get par prosecuted to the max. I really do. Yeah. And see, here's the thing is right now we still have, you know, what's his name with the with the FBI, Comey. Right. I mean, and we right. have these people that are obviously on the other side. So those guys are just they're not going to do anything. They're not going to walk, march in the White House or anything. I mean, they, they go after Sheriff Arpaio because he's spearheading the birth certificate uh, deal, which is a felony, which they've already proven. But of course, nobody's going to touch anything. So unfortunately, yeah, Trump has to wait until his people get in there. Mm -hmm. And and that's the tricky part is they know it. He knows it. It's 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 like a, it's it's I'm picturing in my head a very tense moment. Like when I don't know if you've ever seen the video of the closing of the border uh, between Pakistan and India, but. Mm -hmm. They have a rivalry, and now there's a there. They do a it's ceremonial now, um, but they have a ceremony every single day at a border crossing between Pakistan and India. And at the end, at the end of the day, they shut the gates, and there's two sets of gates right next to each other, and the guards are standing right next to each other. And the object of the game or the the thing is to outdo each other. So they they exaggerate their movements and march and shout and slam the gates and. Rah, 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 and everybody gathers to watch this pomp and circumstance, you know, because it all comes from a very um, tense standoff between the two countries. Well, sure. that's what I'm seeing now is the changing of the guards and it's a very tense standoff. It's almost like a hostage uh, handoff. It is because there's a coup going on I and mean, there's yeah. a counter coup. So that's the problem. We're, we're dealing with two different corporate, almost like two corporate governments going toe to toe. And one's good and one's not. And we're on the side that what that. The good side, obviously. But yeah, I see that. And that's why I'm concerned about our military. I want to know where they are on the map. I want to know what the Navy, what's replacing our Navy to protect our waters. Do we have subs? I mean, obviously, there's got to be something. We can't just have it naked, right? I think I think we do have some really interesting technology down there. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, we have to, Mr. Rowe. Otherwise, we're just sitting ducks. Yeah, I think, um, which kind of makes me wonder how far the the illusion of our, you know, what's going on in our world is, you know, because we know that there's a secret space program. We know that like uh, enemies on this planet seem to cooperate when it comes to things like space. Um, so behind the scenes, how far does the facade go? Uh, that, that being said though, it's, I, I, I can it to playing in a sandbox. That's kind of like a choose your own adventure book where we have a, a little bit of wiggle room, uh, even though we're in a containment, you know, um, we can, it's just like we're on this earth, we can change the way things go, you know, so we have a contained bit of wiggle room, we can, we can shape the atmosphere of the party, mm -hmm. uh, if we really try, if we let somebody else do it, you know, it might not work out so well. So that's, I think what we're doing. And I, I think that, you know, we've, we've got billions of people on this planet, but a few of us are still honorable and have the ability to have access in positions where they can rival these folks that think they've taken control and are going to, you know, bring in the new age of whatever they think is enlightenment. <laughs> mm -hmm. I think they're bringing in enslavement. That's what they're trying to do. And that's the nice part about the U.S. right now. And, and we are 
right here, we're the pillar. We're the, we're the giant pillar, if you ask me, insofar as, um, you know, really being capable of being educated and also evolved at a very high level to a point where we're not going to allow any more corruption or entrainment programming. You know, the mass mind control being slept and, and breaking these spells. So I see us as, a, as really, we are the focal point right now. So we really do need to set that parameter up to a point where we do honor freedom and free will so that we can spread it across the globe. Otherwise, forget it. It's global enslavement, as you know. Um, Europe, is, Europe is a mess right now. All these other areas are just completely disgusting. So we have to do something about it. And of course, I, I know that once again, President-elect Trump will make that change. We're right there with him. We're riding the same wave. And there are a lot of us. I mean, it's not like we're just a few here and there. There's there's a lot of us here. There are a lot of us globally that are out there with the same vision and the same insight. So we can break that that fake paradigm. And, and you know, when I look at the mainstream media, you're right. You, you touched on we are the truth media. I don't even call us alternative. We are truth media. And what they are out there and these is mainstream is just propaganda, BS, uh, I, I just, I, like I said, I don't watch it, I don't listen to it, but just to even see the little little type of, of sound bites that they have on Facebook just infuriates me, you know, that they're just, nothing is honest with these people. Yeah, I mean, it's it's ridiculous. Uh, it, it, it does, it burns me because what what makes me even more angry is that there's actually a few people out there that are buying this crap. And I have a friend who's one of them, and, and he is a good-natured person. I've known him since high school. Um, so I know him, you know, I mean, I know him. Um, he's a good natured person. He likes animals. He respects elders. He genuinely is not. I've never known him to be racist or or anything like that. But he is completely bought into this whole attitude of social justice kind of thing. And, you know, I've hinted at him a few things, but, uh, you know, I'm just I'm not going to start an argument or anything. And I don't understand. They're, it's really good. The programming. The, it's very sophisticated, uh, and I think they probably do have help with. I've always been suspicious of all these cell towers and things, you know, that go up, and why are certain things on certain frequencies, you know, like the. the I'm not saying that the smart meters are doing this and that or any, but there is actually a measurable change that you can, if you take um, dark field microscopy and you look at your red blood cells in real time and you walk next to a smart meter those red blood cells change, or excuse me, I think they're red and white blood cells, they change uh, their composition and they start to, you know, burst and they start to die. Right. Uh, after six seconds of exposure from like, you know, two or three feet away because these things are bursting. That is just one little dot in many other, you know, things mm -hmm. that are occurring at the same time. And and it may not even be something that's done on purpose to, let's say, you know, screw up somebody's brain or do. It may be something as innocuous or uh, as the effects of a radar gun on a police officer. Does that make you a little more aggressive? Was that planned by someone somewhere or did it just happen to turn out that way? You know, right. So. That's a good point you make. Well, well, it's definitely toxic. There's no doubt about that. The ultra low frequencies will definitely lull people. To some degree, we have other types of um, transmissions and signals that they can use to create a, a mass collective lulling or, or, like you were saying, agitating the, the crowds. They can do all sorts of things remotely. Uh, we now have our drones that are capable of doing uh, deploying s uh, covert signals, which are psychotronically based, which means the old school stuff was, oh, they could blow up your house. Well, now they can actually blow you up or, or cause your heart to stop with a directed energy weapon because they're loading these things up now. So, And, and you know where I've been with the covert technology. I've, I've been interfaced with that technology, and I, I've told people before, um, I was very, very sick a couple of years ago, and I went through through a, a detoxification from a special forces guy who pretty much saved me uh, because I had toxicity from the radiation from a lot of things that they did to me over the years. And my body was getting just a buildup of all the toxicity. So what I'm telling you, the reason that I expose the covert technology is because when you get interfaced with that type of artificial telepathy, it tries to entrain you in a communication system where it's telling you what to say, think, how to act, how to move. Uh, this is a complete entrainment mind control program. And this is what concerned me was I saw this 1984 on steroids with this technology. You know, if people think it's bad enough to get social engineered in school um, or, or sit there and be brainwashed by a television set or a radio. Well, just think about being interconnected with artificial intelligence, the electronic God, where you have to believe in a certain thing or it will, it will attack you or it'll cause vertigo. It'll take you to the ground and it can stop your vitals. You think I'm kidding you? It's not science fiction. And I know you realize that. So this is what I've always looked at. We, we have to have a protocol behind this technology. They can't just be using it like this. And, and that's one of the biggest things I'd love to address to the new president is, is the um, misuse and abuse of technology and how it needs to be regulated. 
Yeah. And I've heard, you know, I, I've talked to people in the technical fields that are, you know, know a lot of <laughs> interesting things. And he used a, a friend of mine who is still working for Bechtel, actually, used a term and he called it electronic nudging. And he's and because I've talked to him about this, I said, so, you know, they have, you know, the old voice to skull technology and that kind of stuff. And and he said, well, yeah, and there's also nudging, electronic nudging. And so what is electronic nudging? And he says when they use this kind of signaling to the brain to just cause the the brain to go into a different state, whether it's alpha or beta, uh, while you induce some other physical or psychological um, stimulation. Whether you're like in a college uh, classroom and the professor is speaking about a certain subject, let's say it's religion, and during portions of the uh, the lecture when he wants you to get emotional or when they, whoever it is, wants you to, you know, really register with something uh, emotionally, empathy, then they'll do an electronic nudge on the classroom and that will you know, get the brain to kind of accept something in a different way. And then they'll turn the nudge off and it's very subtle. Mm -hmm. And so this is what I'm wondering if they, if they're subtly nudging groups of people, you know, they, cause they can make riots and things. But the other question is there must be a counter technology, just like you can jam a cell phone signal, just mm -hmm. like, you know, there, there, and we have the, studies into, um, I'm going to sound a little tinfoil hattish, but I, I, I mean, tongue in cheek, things like shungite, which is known by the Russians to attune electromagnetic energy. And mm -hmm. they use it as in rooms where the walls are made out of this material. So, right. Yeah, they can use that. I have one, I have a bucky bag on my computer and things like that. C certainly that can deflect a lot insofar as, um, you know, not being hit directly with certain things. But when it comes down to being interfaced with the technology I was hit with, Nothing protected me when I was triangulated with that technology. Um, they pretty much interfaced me live feed real time, and I was plugged in, just like the movie The Matrix. I mean, you get plugged in. And with that comes um, all sorts of anomalous signals and things that actually to this day can be measured. Um, if you ever come up with a solution to, to bust up that signal, I'd be very, very interested because I've been working with a lot of very good scientists for years. And some of them suggested an EMP blast, but I'm not, I'm not willing to go flatline for it. Um, so, you know, there's a lot going on. Um, I would say radionics is also a very good way to deflect some transmissions that are incoming. So if you're broadcasting a radionics uh, transmission of signal, that can actually disperse anything that's coming in or trying to interconnect onto your electromagnetic field. Uh, the problem that I found with this technology is that it was so personalized with me. I mean, these guys, it's like, it's like they just triangulated, targeted, uh, sent this signal right in, integrated it in, and, and neurally weaved it into my neural circuits to a point where I was basically, it's like a transhumanism program. So, and if you had met me back in 2004, you would have seen the trauma in my eyes. You would have seen an awful lot of trauma. Um, I was remotely controlled to such an extent, it's not even funny. It's a miracle I came back, really. Well, it's, it's also a testament to the strength uh, that you have in character, you know, that uh, basically you're able to overcome it and uh, you didn't let it take you over, you know? Oh, yeah. Well, they kept telling, my friends kept telling me, don't let them take you down. And yeah. I didn't let them take me down, but I did turn them in, I, um, you know? I wonder how many people are, you know, committed to mental institutions because they never even knew what was occurring to them. And, you know, it's mm -hmm. just, this is the kind of thing that can really, it's a serious thing. I mean, it could drive you, you know, mad. Uh, oh, but that's the whole idea behind it is to drive the target insane, uh, make them have a breakdown of some kind so they can make them look crazy or create a Manchurian program where they sit there and insert a, a false screen memory or something like that, where they can actually program the target to perform a certain you know, task, so to speak. They have the EEG heterodyning I've talked about before and EEG cloning, which is literally creating a false brainwave template and overlaying it onto the target so that there's a schism involved with the natural brainwave activity to a point where they look like they have a, a schizophrenic brainwave when they don't. That's actually engineered. And, and this has been going on for a long time. It's a, you can look up these patents with this technology with the heterodyning. That's an old CIA program that they used to use. And they still deploy it through signals and transmission. Uh, but what I've noticed with the new transhumanism is that, you know, they're, they're, trying, they're trying to capture your brainwave templates. They're, ma they're mapping your electromagnetic field, your neural circuitry, your brainwaves. They're interfacing it onto an artificial intelligence array system. They're keeping these templates and they're using them for transhumanism. So, um, you know, these guys are so sick. I mean, there's, there's something so insidious about this whole group of people that misuses this technology. Because as you probably are aware of your soul, your spirit, whatever you want to call it, your consciousness is so immortal and beautiful. It does. It's perfect. It doesn't need this. It doesn't need this kind of imperfection and schism that they try to create. So, 
Um, it's, it's really an abomination if you ask me. Yeah, I, I agree. You know, it's, uh, and, and this stuff is, uh, you know, there is a, I've heard that there is a, a black market out there that, you know, folks that are connected on the intelligence level and, you know, you have a lot of money or you, you just got to know the right person. Um, there have been reports of folks that, you know, they, they go and they call their senator too many times and they say too many things and maybe they even sue him and take him to court and, and maybe even win or something. And then all of a sudden they've got these harassment issues. You mm -hmm, know? Right. Yeah. And, gaslighting and gang stalking is huge. Targeted individuals is huge as well. Yeah. There's a lot of that going on. You know, and, and I mean, I've I've looked a little bit uh, uh, on the net and uh, there's different reactions from different people. You know, some people uh, pick it up right away. There's a few that I I look at and I just I wonder because I don't know. I just don't know the context and I don't see it. But who am I to judge? And then there's others. It's very obvious. And and a, a few of them I've seen where, you know, the, the people reporting. Yeah, you know, I, I really almost just took my car and rammed them into the rammed into them. And so. I can imagine how it would drive a person to the edge because, you know, if, if I'm getting followed or something, I'll probably try to confront the person. <laughs> mm -hmm. Right. Well, and the thing is with this thing, it's, it's an invisible communication system. If they get hit with the artificial telepathy, first of all, you can measure it. It's a signal transmission. It's an incoming signal. So they can actually measure these things with spectrometers and things like that. But, right. but the bottom line is most people don't know what it is. And sometimes they think they're losing their minds. Um, and also, if they're doing a brain hack remotely through the signal, they can take over your body. They can take over your vitals and they can actually make you have a car accident by causing you to drive off a cliff. This is what I mean by remote control, okay? They can put you under remote control, hence my book, Eye of the Remote, because that's what they were doing to me in 2004. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I could think of Michael Hastings, um, you know, when he was driving his car and all of a sudden it just drives into a tree at 100 miles an hour. Um, and I'm also thinking about that uh, there are folks that could use this kind of technology to not to drive a person insane, not to just to just to intimidate just to say, just to walk up and say, look, if you don't stop doing this, okay, hit it, Jack, and boom, you know, you have all this stuff going on in your head, and then just confront you and say, look, how would you like that to follow you around for the rest of your life? Mm -hmm. Stay out of this, you guys, you don't know what you're getting into, and nine out of ten people probably are going to say, okay, I, I don't want to have any part of that, this, you know, to... That's right. Yeah. No, you're very, very right. It is an intimidation tool. Um, you know, they can call it a lot of other things, but most of the time when they're doing that, they're usually trying to recruit a target to some degree from what I've seen and what I've experienced. Um, with the SciSpy technology, that's part of it because you're the eyes and ears of the communication system, which is a live handler real time, and also a controller and programmer and operators with artificial intelligence. It makes it a, it makes a really smooth SciSpy system. I can tell you that point blank. Um, but it also is very abusive and it also creates alters or tries to. They tried to create alters in me and it wasn't working. I kept fighting them. But um, they were insistent upon doing things like that back in 2004. And, and this is something that um, people might confuse with uh, either demonic or extraterrestrial, extra planar communication, um, which does exist, in my opinion. Um, you know, these are all issues. So uh, you, you can have, uh, you know, someone who is truly, you know, talking to spirits or possessed by spirits or demons mm -hmm. um, and has nothing to do with electronic stuff or vice versa. Someone who is completely under the electronic harassment and it has nothing to do with the supernatural. Right. And they could look very similar. And, you know, the only way I guess to really know is to have a combination of the, you know, detection that you can use with technology mm -hmm. and possibly to rule everything out a uh, an orthodox or a catholic priest that's uh you know able to do the exorcist just to be sure <laughs> right well the one thing they need is the integrity behind that and i know you know a lot of good priests that are good uh, but i'll tell you point blank i'm always i'm always suspicious of the vatican for various reasons because if i know about this technology they know about it and that's the one thing that i look at it's a great recruitment weapon because if they see people oh look they're possessed and they're actually electronically hit mm -hmm. which shows signs of a similar it can actually mimic a real possession so they can come in and waltz in and say we're going to heal you and they can you know do whatever they do technologically perhaps to as high-tech sorcerers to actually uh, remove this this anomaly from the target but at the same time it's really not about being possessed by a force of demonic force it's more about technological force so that's something i am concerned about but i do know that there is a, a real thin line between weaponizing the supernatural world and i think that's why they went after beings like me because before they hit me i mean i i, went, I was doing a lot of dna activation work i mean this isn't woo woo new age it's, it's actually alchemy and mystical alchemy i was doing a lot of powerful work to a point where my light body and my 
my electromagnetic field and my Merkaba signal was really high, was really high frequency. And I know that that was an appeal to them because there was a natural signal that they hijacked onto that in 2004. So yeah, you're right. There's a, there's the electronic possession that mimics the natural um, demonic and the illusion of. But then I look back, Mr. Rowe, and I think to myself, how many people think they're possessed that or might be hit with a technology that's creating that? Yeah, I I totally agree. Um, there's you know it's there is what I've heard is that uh, it's possible that I I think that there is a covert sector of. I don't even want to, I don't know if the government or it's just a rogue intel sector or whatever that is actually broadcasting some sort of um, some sort of signal out there that people can pick up on when they are under different states. Um, and one of the states, and I, I've witnessed somebody do this, and I, I don't know if they were picking up on broadcast or if they were actually communicating with spirits because the, the person had been smoking methamphetamine. Oh. And and I just had happened to be staying at you know a person's house that was next door and this individual's there, and I knew the individual from you know years back, so it was not like we weren't weren't strangers. But this individual didn't know anything about my family or my situation, and he and I were sitting down and you know playing chess, passing the time, and then he started talking about how he could talk to spirits and things, and and I kind of took it with a grain of salt and. And he's all, no, uh, your mom, um, they're telling me, and she's here now. And I'm like, what? And then he said a name that my mother was known by that only my father called her, um, which was freaked me out. Mm -hmm. And then he said some things about a situation um, around her death that freaked me out because it was very accurate in some, some ways, but also said something in a way that would plant a, a little bit of doubt in my mind, which I kind of knew that it was not true. And then that made me think, okay, this guy is talking to a demonic spirit because they, they have knowledge that, you know, other things don't have. Mm -hmm. um, and, and so that's one thing. But then I've also heard the same individual um, talking about all this crazy stuff that's, that I would, classify that he was getting some sort of electronic transmission, you know, um, mm -hmm. because he was speaking, it, it just, it was very, it was eerie to me. Um, and this happened uh, a decade, maybe more than a decade ago. Um, That's very interesting. Well, you know, you can take it on so many different levels, but sometimes I, can, I do believe in entity possession, don't get me wrong. But I also know that there's a reason that they data mine with NSA and all these covert intelligence agencies that they're always, I remember, and I'm not going to go into specifics about it, but um, I knew somebody who was affiliated with the Star Wars project a long time ago, and we used to get monitored by the Pentagon. This was in the 80s, okay? Nice. Um, I am very clear on how they spy, and how, and I never put it together because I was very young back then, but I'll tell you point blank. I know how these guys spy, and they keep records of voice pattern recognition. They keep patterns of everything you say and do to a point where they have these data files and these, and these different types of templates. And I believe in, on some level they can actually use that for a feedback program to create all these, um, like, where, where are they getting this information? How can they know this? Well, look at your friendly neighborhood spy agencies and tell me that's, how, that's what they specialize in is acquiring data, oh, um, and conversations, and everything else, right? Yeah. And have you ever seen these little Facebook things that uh, it's an innocuous little survey that comes up? What's your favorite mm -hmm. color? What's your favorite flower? You know, and the, these little things. And I'm wondering if, you know, these things are also being fed into the system, the AI, the master AI, if you want to call it, to give a profile on everybody that they can, you know. Mm -hmm. Oh, well, that, that's part of it. I mean, you know, there's so many things they can do with key logging and everything else through the computer systems. So I think we're hitting a break there. Yes, we are. Wow, that was a fast hour. It one, was. <laughs> one more hour to go, and we will be right back. Freeamflips.com. Follow me. <laughs>
five days in 2017. This is freedomslips.com reality extraction with my special guest, Solaris Brewhaven. I am your host, the writer, Reverend Dr. Dr. Rose. <laughs> And we shall continue the conversation. Uh, we are just letting it flow. We're talking about everything from, you know, uh, spiritual to electronic influence uh, that's going on in this world. You know, I was, I was also uh, during the break, I was pondering the uh, the ability or what the ability might be for the uh, powers that be or the the black world to enter into and or influence the dream state. Mm -hmm. Jewel. You know, oh, yeah. sometimes I have very, very vivid dreams where I believe that I'm, I'm not, I may, I'm not actually dreaming. I'm somewhere else. And then there are other ones where I know that I'm at the same place and it's, I recognize it, you know, it's a very stable place and, and there's a different feeling. And, uh, a couple times, I, I, I mean, I have almost like a feeling that I, I'm uh, avoiding something. Um, but what do you do? You have anything to say on you know the the ability for the influence of dreams? Well, I, I know that there is astral hitmen. I mean, there there are things they can, I call them voodoo hitmen too. But there are there are other things that can intercept you while you're astral projecting or astral traveling. That's why people do have to set their perimeters and be very shielded if they're deciding to do that. If you have recall, if you're lucid in your experience and you're actually astrally projecting out of your body, then that would be something that you want to look at. insofar as what's around you, if you're being tailed or not, because that does happen. Um, you know that real quick to interrupt, but um, there's a couple times, and I, I've done the astral thing that there's a few times that very recently though that i've been in fact this month uh not, well last month i was in in the room here sort of falling asleep and i was about to get that feeling you know when you have that whooshing sound you're about to leave or something is going to happen and you're still awake and i swear there was some some stuff watching me that you know it was a different feeling and you know you can feel when something is and it scared me Mm -hmm. I actually backed back out. I woke myself up. I was like, oh, whoa, I don't want to go right now. Go ahead. Yeah, you should definitely make sure. Well, I know you probably do this, but I would do whatever prayers or whatever shielding you do, uh, making sure that you set those, what I say, set the parameters, but literally keep yourself uh, clear and, and, and do whatever it is that you need to do to shield yourself when you rest at night. I think a lot of people are getting... Um, observed to some degree. And I think that there's a lot of astral debris. There's a, there's a bit of a junkyard around us because of all the regurgitation of just natural psychic energy, um, energy that's just spinning out of control just here on the timeline. So you have that to look at. And if you're sensitive, you're going to pick up on more than you need to. Um, with my experience, you know, I was interfaced with, with the technology. I stopped dreaming completely with the program because all they were doing was creating virtual space for me. So I literally, it's like being you know connected to the Borg. You're literally, um, it, it's just weird. I, I hated it because you can't get any real dream time. It's all about programs. It's all programming. That's all it is. Uh, and it's virtual. So there's a lot of that going on. But I would say you're not the first person that's told me they felt something ominous around them when they're sleeping. Um, when I, like I said, I would do, definitely do some affirmations and prayers. I don't discount that people are attacking each other subconsciously through the dream time also. Um, there's dream pool collectives. And yeah. of course, being on the internet, being high profile, and you may not think you're high profile, but you are. You're a voice on the radio. There's an energetic signature associated with that. And, and there are people that feed on that in a positive level, and then there are the other ones, you know? So you do have to be careful and disconnect energetically from things like that. So yeah, there's a I, war. It's a battlefield. I, I've, uh, you know, ever, ever since I was a child, you know, the one thing, one reason I'm into this kind of stuff as far as the exploration of consciousness and going beyond the mundane world and, you know, the little nuances of the craft and whatnot is when I was young, I used to get visited basically nightly by uh, the hat man. I'm sure you've heard of that, the shadow. Right. Man, you know? And this thing would push me out of my body and I'd see myself standing and I'd feel the pull of my gut. Um, I never was scared of it. Uh, and I'd go back to bed and, you know, that would be that. Um, the only time that I was scared was at other times during the day where I'd see gray shape you know, gray humanoid forms without any uh, features, just like almost like um, mannequins without any faces walking out of the walls and a very slow sort of movement. Um, and I'm 
I, I look back in my memories and I'm thinking, did I see them actually walk out of the walls or is this something of a, a recessed memory of an abduction or were they grays? Um, which that was something that the, the, both were physical, you know, both happened in my waking state, like getting up or being mm-hmm. awake. Yeah, so. like a parallel bleed through reality. Well, you know, we are multidimensional. I know people get tired of me saying this, but we exist simultaneously in multidimensional space. And with that comes soul extensions and aspects of us that are multiversal. So you have to look at it. You're not, you're more than you are in this timeline. So when you're seeing a parallel, what I call it, there's a parallel bleed through reality, which means that, that an aspect of you could be bleeding through to this timeline that you're experiencing. It looks like a shadow, but it's not. I'm not saying that that's exactly what it is, but it is a possibility, um, with, especially when you're looking at things like that. And also the, the abductee thing, the contactee, you strike me as somebody who's a contact you for you know whether you like it or not but that's just something that that i got a hit on too when you were talking about that so you know take it for what it's worth but uh, i think that all of us um to some degree are what i call star star travelers we we go in and out of timelines and we go in and out of of consciousness and other other multiple world realities and we bring a lot of that here with us when we enter onto the timeline we incarnate here um and i think that's another reason why we get put on um you know we get tagged and released to some degree with with technology or whatever it is because they want to know more it's more about um you know, really knowing and mapping the soul structure, the consciousness, everything that's geometrically aligned with the multiverse that we connect into, that's part of us that they're trying to access. So, um, but I have seen shadow type things, only saw those after my induction. And I was walking down towards my hotel room after I was doing the Mind Control Super Soldier Summit. I was doing a, a presentation and I was walking to my room and I know this wasn't my shadow and I saw two of them following me, shadowing me. Um, and then I went right to sleep. I mean, I was out like a log. So I don't like that. Uh, I don't like things like that tailing me at all. Yeah, yeah, and 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 I got the feeling that this shadow was definitely it was not uh, it's it wasn't technology. I know they have um, you know like uh, cloaking technology now, but that mm-hmm. that the, these experiences were definitely something. Maybe you know some people told me it was from lower astral, or um, I've even had a dream that was very vivid, and like I said, I've never been frightened of the shadow or the hat man. Except one uh, once when there was one with two red eyes. Um, after looking at an old grimoire, a Greek book, I went home and uh, my room was cold. I turned around and there was this thing at eye level two inches away from my face. That's the most frightened I've ever been, bar none, in my entire life. Um, mm-hmm. To this day, you know, I mean, but uh, but I had a dream one time. And then, by the way, that was a physical thing. But I had a dream that this the, the everybody was sitting in a circle and there were totems behind people. And we were going around the circle and one person would say like, you know, my, my, uh, guardian is the, uh, is the, the wolf. And another one said, mine is the bear and mine is the wolf. And then it got to me. And before I could actually say something, something came right up into my ear and whispered, I am the shadow. And you know, <laughs> like, interesting. And then I woke up <laughs> and I'm like, well, that was kind of strange, you know? Um, but as weird as it may sound, I almost have an affinity with this being and I just can't put my finger on it. And, and yes, I have flashes of, you know, things that may have occurred in my past, um, you know, as a child that I can barely remember. So I, I, you know, wonder if maybe I should try to go, I've tried to be hypnotized. Nobody can really hypnotize me. So probably a blessing. Well, you know, it, it strikes me as um, the legitimate MIBs, in my opinion, are the hybrids. They're not the ones that people say, you know, look like the people today of the MIBs. I don't classify as MIBs at all. But the ones that were more um, supernatural oriented, energetically speaking, that's what you strike me as being connected to to some degree, too. And that could be an aspect of your it could be part of your lineage to your family. Um, I did notice that on my mother's side, she has a lot of uh, Scottish Rite Mason, high ranking we have a lot of, it's kind of like ancient mystery schools. There's a lot going on there energetically. And I think there's a legacy associated with that. Um, just, just because of my own experiences, they're not necessarily close to yours, but I did have an interesting co- um, communication that was happening when my mother transferred out in, in June of 2004. I was, I was hit with the program in April of 2004. And then in June, my mother died and, and I was lying down getting inundated with this technology. And I, heard these communication, a live feed real time saying, get up, go to the phone. It's going to ring. It's your sister. Your mother died. Point blank. These shadow, whatever communication. I get up, I go to the phone. I start to pick it up. It starts to ring. It's my sister. My mother transferred out. Wow. Yeah. And it wasn't me talking to myself. So I do understand clearly that there are things that are very ominous out there um, that are things that I can't really explain to some degree. I can only go by my own benchmark of cosmic consciousness, but, but definitely 
it's something to look at. And I didn't see that they were ominous at the time. I didn't think they were bad. Um, I didn't get that those beings, there were certain beings. It seemed like there was a struggle when I was pulled into that program because it seemed like there was good and evil on, on right and left. It seemed like there was, there was good on my side and then when there was evil adversaries. So I do know that that was happening when I was pulled into that program. And I still, that's why I always still to this day, I fight the good fight. You know, I still, yep. I still fight the good fight. Yeah. You know, it's, it's, you know, you remind me um, of a story with the death of uh, somebody close to me was, um, you know, uh, we made a deal and I said, you know, if there's a way that you can communicate with me when you go, you know, let me know. And uh, it wasn't, you know, it was a little while after, but we went to a graveyard where this person was and a friend of mine and I, and I said, you know, hello, I introduced my friend who never met this person. And then we, um, we went back to my house and as we opened the door, the phone was ringing. And I didn't make it to answer the phone. The answer machine picked it up. And it was the number on the caller ID was from the cemetery that we had just come from. And on the answer machine was the touch tone. It was like, doot, 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 doot. And I picked it up real quick, and there's nothing there. So I thought, well, that was strange. Um, wow, that was weird because we didn't check in the cemetery. My friend witnessed this. And my friend was all there. It was communication. It was communication. And I kind of went, maybe it was. So, mm -hmm. okay, so then we, after a few hours, I drove my friend home to his house. We opened his front door at his apartment, which this person never knew. His phone was ringing. The answer machine picked up in his house. Again, he has caller ID, the cemetery. Again, doot, 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 on the touch tones. I kid wow. you. We called the cemetery right away after and they're like, no, nobody called here. You know, they didn't know what we were talking about. And I was like, whoa, that was, uh, <laughs> that was communication. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> Definitely. It sounds like a Twilight Zone episode. My goodness. Yeah. You know, you're a spook baby. There's no doubt about it. And I think I'm spooky too. So that's probably why you and I resonate. We, we get along really well well, because I, we both have a dark side, but it's not evil. It seems like yeah. we have this anomalous energy. Yeah. I truly believe that there are soul groups that do reincarnate, um, you know, uh, and over and over, you know, and mm -hmm. we probably know each other lifetime over lifetime over lifetime, you know, you, I, and a whole bunch of other people that resonate with each other. And, and I believe that, that, you know, mm -hmm. sometimes we're friends, sometimes we're different relations or whatever, um, not necessarily even male, female, or even in the future, past or future, you know, mm -hmm. uh, maybe even far off in another galaxy somewhere. So right. it's, it's, reminders too. We're reminding each other what, what we're here for. If you yeah. look and see what's going on here, for example, even the station, we're, we're standing up for something bigger than what we realize. And it's all about really free will, honoring free will at a very high level of consciousness. You know, we say it differently sometimes on each show, but really that's what it boils down to. And I, I agree with you. I agree that souls travel in groups, spirit, whatever you want to call your celestial star families, and that we incarnate here. But I'll tell you what, we're solid. Um, there are a lot of us here that are really fortified as pillars of light, what I call the pillars of light, that are here to really just say, hey, man, bring it. You bring us a war. We're going to counter you. And I don't know where that strength comes from, Mr. Rowe. All I know is that I, I felt like I lived and died several times over through the program I went through. And I just keep getting more fortified, more fortified, and I just keep going. Because there's a divine force that drives me. There's, I mean, it has to be divine force because I couldn't do it alone. Yeah. Oh, I, I totally uh, understand. I mean, I, I understand where you're coming from, and I agree. And um, yeah, it's uh, and and I'm I think it's a, it's it's a good thing where you know we we should consider ourselves blessed really when we you know blessed by source or whatever you want to call it. Um, because there are so many out there that are still lost and maybe it's just younger souls that have not incarnated, you know, the, so many times where they don't have that instinctual, you know, memory or that genetic memory or whatever you want to call it. Yeah, uh, I call us old souls. I think we've been around multiple lifetimes on and off planet. First of all, I think we've had a lot of lifetimes off planet to such an extent that we bring a lot of that database with us, which is, explains our, our knowledge and our, yeah. our level of, lo of knowledge and consciousness. And also, I don't discount the ancient uh, Atlantean timelines either and some other things that we were here as big players to some degree. I believe that does happen. And yeah. we bring forth with us those same anomalous energies to some degree through spirituality. Uh, it's really fantastic when you look at it on that level. But I also see the polarization. Once again, it's the misuse of technology. You know, that was an Atlantean thing. They misused and they weaponized so, so many things on a technological scale. There were psychic wars and telepathic wars. And this is what they're doing here with synthetic telepathy. They're, they're loading people up with synthetic that it's levity and they're using it as a weapon of war. So, you know, I can look at that and say, wow, this is like a, a, a bleed through of Atlantean timelines to some degree. 
I, I, yeah. And you know, it's interesting, um, on the, on the incarnation thing, I'll, I'll tell you real quick. My oldest memory, um, as an infant is of a Naga. Um, wow. and I don't know where it comes from. I think it comes from another lifetime, but I have memory of being cared for affectionately as a, as a baby by a group of Naga, which are the sort of snake kind of creature that lives on the ground that don't like humanity. I don't know where that comes from. Maybe that is from the old Atlantean kind of thing. Um, but that is my, my oldest memory. And, and I also think that someone out there might actually be trying to map the journey of the soul of the spirit mm -hmm. from incarnation to incarnation. That might be what they're trying to do. Maybe there is something out there that doesn't have the ability, um, because that's one of the things that um, the uh, that we talk about is what what the enemies of humanity have. Why are they jealous of humanity? Some people say, well, they they don't have free will, or they don't have the ability to spiritually ascend, or they don't have the ability to do this or that, and and that might be one of the things. And these whoever they are, um, archons, whatever, may be trying to figure out how we grow pow more and more powerful from ascension over lifetime over lifetime. You know, that mm -hmm. every yeah, time exactly. we die and come back, we're more powerful. <laughs> I agree. Well, it has to do with cellular memory, too, because when you incarnate or enter on, I call it entering onto a timeline, because we're immortals. We don't really incarnate, per se. We're always out there in consciousness. So we yeah. enter onto a timeline, but we still have all that database with us at the cellular level. It activates through frequency and spiritual lifestyle. So when you start working on the levels of spirit, whether it doesn't matter what path you're walking, if it's pure, you're going to activate your DNA through higher consciousness, and that activates cellular recall, cellular memory, which is also the full light Akashic, not to be confused with the fake Akashic that they pull out of their butts here on the timelines, because those you can't go by. But you go by the full light Akashic, that's real record of data. So, I mean, that's my own personal experience from what I know about it. But but I know it's cellular memory. And, and yeah, I agree with you. When they start interfacing and mapping a body electromagnetically and also getting into the, the celestial design work of a, of, a per, of a person, they're looking for something. And I do know that this artificial intelligence that they create is all... It's not immortal. It's not. It's not consciousness. It's not soul. It's not an extension of creation. Therefore, it is. It's imperfect, right? It's kind of like Star Trek. It doesn't have a perfection to it because it doesn't have consciousness. It doesn't have that that love, that universal flow. So that's one thing I did notice when you get encapsulated with that technology. It's so heartless. It's so cold, Mr. Rowe. I can't explain you. It's explain to you. Excuse me. It's just so. It's so empty. OK, it's like you you have the Holy Grail in you and they and they steal it away and try to give you something mechanical in its place. It's disgusting. You know, and I know what the Holy Grail feels like. I know what the divine law, um, you know, divine presence feels like. So, yeah, it's um, but I think you're on the right track. You, you know, you kind of touched on something about you said the full versus the fake Akashic record. And it sort of sparked something in me where I'm wondering if uh, someone out there is attempting to broadcast a false Akashic record. Mm -hmm. Oh, I agree. I totally agree with you. Yeah, because man, think about it. Everything is a construct of energy. So what we put out to the ethers manifest. These guys have been censoring data since day one here, right? Everything is a lie. I mean, they've censored all sorts of information, ancient texts, everything has been censored. So they have a false Akashic. They have a false reality matrix. And that's the one most people, I think a lot of channels tune into that. And that's why it's so off the charts in a weird way. It's just not accurate. But if you go beyond that and you break that level, then you go to the higher levels where it's pure energy and pure consciousness, pure love. But I agree with you. I think, you know, they're manipulators. They're, they're manipulators. Um, you can call them whatever you want, dark sorcerers, whatever. They are here to create and encapsulate everybody through a mass mind control entrainment program so they can create reality. They can create a reality for you. They don't want you creating your own reality through higher consciousness. And that's why I believe they use frequency fences to contain people energetically so they can't pierce that veil. This is the same thing with the mainstream corporate. You know, they're doing the same thing. They're controlling and manipulating reality. And when you step out of that reality and start calling them on it, they can't handle it. Yeah, yeah I, I totally agree. And it is. When you break everything down at the end of the day, it is all based on vibratory vibrations and frequency, whether... Mm -hmm. Uh, it's a radio wave or whether it's the cells in your body, um, whether it's a thought pattern at some level, when you get down to it, it is all down to basic frequency. I mean, everything is light almost. Mm -hmm. Yeah, basic. it's a construct of energy. You're 100% you're accurate. And even Tesla told us that. 
you know, but we all knew it. It's just frequency. And that's why it's so powerful. That's why I look and see everything we create here is kind of interesting, isn't it? But it's all constructive energy. So if you raise your vibratory rate, what's going to happen to you? Your parameters are going to change. You're going to, you're going to phase into another dimensional space. And this is why I say Merkaba, because I'm familiar with Merkaba works to a point where your vehicle of light activates, then you're able to phase shift and navigate to other levels of not only consciousness, but dimensional spaces. Your world will change around you. And I believe that's the transfiguration of the atom. That's the true cosmic Christ. It wasn't about Christ being persecuted and, and you know all, all the things that they teach you in the Catholic Church. It's about the transfiguration of the atom, immortality, light body, merkaba, ascension. That's ascension. That's uh, that's what that story. I think I think Sean David Morton mentioned it where I heard it, but it was about the Buddha who um, was on the verge of ascension, and he had to have like sort of a bunch of girls around him to keep him on the physical plane. Otherwise, he'd sort of phase right out. He'd wink out. Yeah. His, his, his. I, I believe that because I remember there were times when I was married. This was my last husband before they, they took my marriage away um, that I would start to get really high vibratory rate. I mean, my energy would just be so high frequency that I would start to see things phase in front of me. And I would actually have to touch him on the shoulder to come back. I'm not kidding you. And that's when, that's when my Merkaba was really charging up. And it was obviously measured. And I, I could hold things in my hands and surge lights out. I mean, my, my electrical system was so strong. When I would have uh, circle groups, I would have, we, we do what we call grid running each month, where we would run light onto the planet, right? And I, I, that must have pissed them off too. But we, we would run this light on the planet. But the people around me would feel my energy to such a level that they would have heart arrhythmias because the electricity was so intense. So I do know what I'm capable of. And I'm just, I'm just one, okay? So you get everybody activated on a higher level. That can be pretty powerful. Yeah, definitely. I I know people that uh, cannot wear watches. Um, I know people that at, lights go out near them. Um, and uh, for some reason, I seem to have a nice affinity for computers a lot of times. Um, but uh, yeah, I, I, I do believe that my mother uh, floated out of her body uh, at one point. So um, I, I think that our natural state as human beings is toward ascension it's toward uh it's just like um you know we it, our spirit is constantly learning as we progress it's constantly wanting to go toward um the the honorable um but there is so much gunk that is clandestinely being broadcast or uh, and not just technically but on a spiritual level as well because you know it is a fight between good and evil i guess mm -hmm. That it is kind of keeping us from naturally ascending, but it's not completely stopping it. It's just slowing us down. Right. There are adversaries there. And I can tell you from what I've experienced with my own personal experience with that technology, they are very jealous of spirit, soul, consciousness, um, anything divine, God, you know, the creator force energy, the Christ consciousness. They're very, very jealous of that. They hate it. Um, they were very, very um, adamant about keeping me. Um, contained to a point where I wasn't doing affirmations or they tried to pull me away from anything that was raising my vibration. It was always about trying to contain my frequency. And sure, we get challengers now and then when we start going to levels of spirituality. But this is this is this is warfare. This is nothing but warfare. And a lot of it's being deployed in covert intel, which is one of the reasons I address it. So it's it's not it's not a pretty one. That's for sure. Yeah, absolutely. That was from Olive, by the way. I don't know. He, he asked if I could talk a little bit about the remote influencing technologies, but I think we kind of covered that um, to some degree. But but literally what you're dealing with is a remote signal that's a brain hack that can literally attack you on, a, on an electromagnetic level or scale to a point where it can affect your vitals, your health. It can cause anxiety. Um, some people may have anxiety attacks. They may feel like they can't breathe. I mean, it, it can take on a lot of different formulas and a lot of physiological symptoms, which may emulate a physical illness when, in fact, it's actually a symptomatic thing that's happening through the transmission of signal. So that's when you know, um, this is why I say when you feel like something's watching you, chances are it is. Uh, and that's not paranoia. That's just about being remotely accessed or remotely looked at. It could be a remote viewer. It could be technological. It could be spiritual. It could be an entity. It could be a guardian. I mean, it could be a lot of things. But you have to break it down as a scientist. And that's one thing I'm very analytical, as you probably are aware, but I'm also very spiritually empathic and psychic. At least I used to be more empathic. I'm not as anymore because of the technology. But that's that's something that people need to look at because it's multi-layered. So now is the is the spiritual um, versus the technological, uh, are they differentiate uh, differentiable? differentiable uh, with technology? I mean, can we measure and say, okay, this is this is man-made versus this is not? 
Right. You can you can measure your own electromagnetic field and aura. You can actually look and see and measure the the natural uh, what I call the universal life force energy naturally in, in a person. Or you can look and see if they have implant anomalies or signals anomalies like what I have uh, or things that are incoming. So there are ways to measure that. And I would say a lot of the time when it's when it's spiritual or psychic, um, you can pretty much kick it out quickly. In other words, if you are a practitioner of, of any type of path, a magic practitioner or whatever you are, then you can pretty much kick it out. If you're feeling like you're getting hit with something, you can you can push it out through your universal life force energy, through your multidimensional design, through light. Um, you can kick it out. Some people like to embrace things in love. And I would say be careful with that because you can take on something that you may not want. So I would say kick it out through the full light universe and, and just kind of recycle some of that stuff. But that's the psychic, you know, deflecting psychic energies being uh, sent your way is, is pretty much easy to do. So, but with the electronic stuff or with the technological stuff, I, I mean, electronic is such a mundane word, but is it, it's, it's more like a scalar thing, isn't it? It can uh, be a scalar wave and it can also be um, other different formulas, but I would say the person has to leave the, the proximity of the environment. So first of all, you have to figure out where it's coming from. Is it, a, is it coming from a microwave tower or a Gwen tower? Is it satellite driven? Uh, is it, it, where's, where's the location? You have to try to pinpoint the location. Some people can't escape the technology if it's satellite driven in, in other areas right. um, because it follows you everywhere because you're interconnected with the program. But a lot of people, if they're getting gaslighted, say, or, or just getting stalked energetically with a transmission of signal, if they remove themselves from that perimeter of that location, they usually feel better immediately. And that's how you know it's a local thing. Right, right. Now, I wonder, is there, because, I mean, this sounds a little wacky to some people, but, you know, you've heard of the people, they put the, the that's where the tinfoil hat comes from, because people mm -hmm. are getting harassed and they will do anything to stop it. And if it, you know, if it includes wearing a tinfoil hat, if it's going to make it feel better, they're going to do it. So the question is, is there any validity to where, I mean, you know, to tinfoil or, <laughs> well, or, or you know, I've used those before guy. just because it, it makes, it gives you a better signal. I mean, remember television sets <laughs> in the old days, right? Yeah, yeah. What did you do to get a better signal? You put the aluminum on, right? That's what I'm thinking. Count. I mean, um, if you put a tinfoil hat on your head, it's going to be like an antenna. <laughs> basically, I, I never, I just fooled around with that in the past. But I'll tell you point blank. I, I knew a guy who worked on the space shuttles mm -hmm. and he had a Faraday. I probably mentioned this before, but he had a Faraday cage in his office down, down where he lived. And he brought me in there and say, let me know what you feel. You know, maybe this will help. Didn't do a thing. Okay. So I can tell you that there, I've tried a lot of things. Tesla coils. Um, I, I actually started using Tesla coils to basically detoxify myself at the cellular level because I knew I was getting inundated with so much toxicity. I had to do I had to do something through frequency to heal. So what happened? What I realized was that the technology was able to kind of adapt to me, and then I started adapting to it, which wasn't good. So that's how I was able to navigate the technology, which. You know, what does that make me now? I'm not quite certain. I know that I'm the one in control, but I, I still was able to kind of kind of navigate on this thing. Yeah, because if, if we could figure out how to negate it uh, to, to help people, you know, I mean, um, like if it's a Shungite mesh or an electronic um... it's a signal. It's going to have to be a signal. The mesh and the Shungite is not going to do a whole lot. I'll tell you that right now. And I'd be happy to work with you. I wish I could meet you in person. I know you have a background in that sort of thing. Hawk has a background. I mean, I'm looking at people who have ability in um, areas where they work with sound and frequency, because I'm That's, telling you right now. Yeah, um, like a jammer, like a j yes, sending out a jamming exactly. frequency. That's to, exactly what you need. A jammer, something that it's like, it's like if something's trying to connect in where they have, what was it, the C-130s, I think they were talking about certain, um, certain flybys they do where they jam your electronics, right? Mm -hmm. Or they're jamming. Well, you need something to jam it back, but your body becomes an electronic device to them, which means that we need to do something to jam that back so that these SOBs can't hack. Because what they're doing is is not for your benefit. Trust me, it's it's to take you down. Yeah, and the the next step would be to actually um, see. The first is reactive. Like if somebody is getting harassed, and let's say you know we have the technology to basically set up a, a electronic fence around their living space so that they're not harassed, so that we can negate it. That's the that's one thing. And and uh, but the next step would be to be aggressive and to overtly seek out these signals mm -hmm. and, you know, kill them. You know, however right. it is, kill those signals, jam them, whatever. Um, well, that's what I've been saying all along is to take the satellites out too. And, you know, they don't like me for a lot of the things I say because it means taking down their defense system because a lot of it's national security based. I hate to tell you, but it's true. Yeah. So, um, so a lot of that time, but still, they don't have a right to do what they're doing. It's a war crime, in my opinion. Um, it, it's a violation of free will and civil rights and everything else associated. So we do have to address it. 
And I think that there is a way, Mr. Rowe, and, and I, there are so many people out there who are targeted individuals, for example, they're suffering every day. Um, some of them get forced into suicide. And, and it's not an accident. I mean, this, this stuff is not like, oh, I'm depressed. I can't take this communication anymore. I'm going to kill myself. I think I mentioned this a lot, but I, I knew somebody who worked for Apple Computer who was an excellent programmer. He got targeted with a technology, a different technology. It pretty much destroyed his life. And the week before he was murdered, he called me and said, they're telling me they're giving me a Luciferian execution. And I said, I said, just just keep shielding yourself and dispel these energies and, and you know, do affirmations, do whatever you need to do to break that. Don't listen to them. And what's interesting is that a week later he was dead through the forced suicide program. And I'm telling you, these things are, you know, these people are laughing, nudge, nudge, wink, wink, ha ha, we got another one. And no one will ever know because the forensics will never know what to look for because it's signal transmission based and it's very clean. It's odorless, it's tasteless, it's hard to detect unless they have a physical implant, which most of the time they don't need that. It's all remote, it's all transmission of signal. So, you know, this is an epidemic, and this is why I touch on a lot of this. It's, it's more than what I've gone through as, as a test pilot for the synthetic telepathy. This, this stuff is hellacious. When, it, when they want to ramp up this technology, it's nasty. And I'm telling you, you've got somebody in D.C., Obama, who accentuated the AI program. If you don't, I'm sure you remember. He was really, really excited to, to pursue this even more so after. And actually, I sent him my book, Eye of the Remote, by the way, which is the biggest probably error I ever made. Mm -hmm. Because I was trying to inform him and tell him what had happened after he got into office. And what did he do? He started accelerating their artificial intelligence program. That's what he did with it. They never once helped my helped me out at all. Um, we, all not well, once. We, we all thought that Obama was going to be a good guy. I mean, you know, we had, we did have a little bit of hope there, um, mm -hmm. myself included, because he was kind of an unknown. And and uh, but yeah, now we see, you know, you look back, hindsight is twenty twenty. <laughs> mm -hmm. And you're right. It's a rich man's toy, because can you imagine? Look at all the inciting that's going on with race wars. Give that technology to somebody who hates a certain color of person, mm -hmm. and you have a nightmare on your hands. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. Seriously. Yeah. So, and yeah. If it, It's just if we, we are advancing every day in technology, and if we can figure out how to almost like detect it like radar to say, okay, we got these signals coming into an area, um, and then just like, you know, fight fire for fire, you, we could have our own Gwen Towers that put out the jamming signal. Mm-hmm. There's actually a city here in California, just a few miles away from me, that is the first and, as far as I know, the only city um, that actually has an ordinance that says that uh, there should there's not to be any electronic harassment. And uh, that's <laughs> wow, that's wonderful. Yeah, they've actually addressed that very issue. The people have gone to the the city and said, look, you know, the people are harassing us electronically. And, uh, you know, and most people call them crazy, like. You know, you, but the um, the board of directors or whoever in Richmond, California, by the way, has hmm. said, OK, we're going to pass an ordinance. So Richmond, California does have the ordinance to free them from harassment. Now, how again, that's the next step is how do you find it? We you know, that's our next goal, uh, I think, is we need to be able to tackle this stuff and fight it one on one. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's a Columbia, is it Columbia Investigations? There's a certain group, there's, there are groups out there that will actually track down the perpetrators. If you're being targeted, um, they can actually track down signals and locations to some degree. If it's been given to covert intel, good luck, you're screwed. Um, there, there, that's what happened to me with some of the technology, because my lawyer, who's ex NSA Signals Intelligence, told me we can't go any further. And, then, and I knew why. And in that case, the only defense is just to have counter and uh, counter defense, to have well, <laughs> I think what they saw it was, too, was that because I was interfaced with that technology that I became something like, well, I'm part of them now or I'm part of the technology. So therefore, they own part of me or something. I don't know. It's just weird. But I still I mean, you know, to this day, I break down a lot of the signals that they've tried to use against me in the past. But I do think that's really interesting what you were touching on there. I'd like to pursue that more um, for local areas here or even anywhere across the map. I think people should really get interested. I'm going to dive into that, Mr. Rowe, about the uh, protection from, from that type of thing, for the electronic warfare, whatever else they're deploying. I think that's very significant. You know what else came to mind was the cloud busters. Now, people were using those a lot. Um, and those can supposedly bust up some things. I'm not sure exactly what they can do, but I, I hear that they can create a disperse, um, kind of a dispersing effect to some degree, maybe temporary, just enough to get you relief to a point where they don't have to reconnect or interconnect a target, so to speak. Mm hmm so, but yeah. you are electrical, so keep that in mind. I mean, we're all electrical beings. That's why we are able, we are very, very compatible with machines. Yeah, definitely. And, and, uh, the, I think, uh, uh, if, if we ever were able to get, um, 
uh, a, a track on, you know, tracking these signals down. Um, at the same time, uh, we can't forget to uh, include the spiritual side as well, mm -hmm. uh, you know, and, and just to, to make sure that uh, not only the electronic air is clean, but the, the supernatural air. Uh, oh, absolutely. Very good point. Yeah, that's why there's a clearing of entities or whatever you need to do. I like doing clearing of entities, but yeah, I totally agree. Uh, and you have to be spiritual to some degree. I mean, Whatever you're guided to be, um, and usually the divine force has many, many levels of consciousness to it, the creator source energy, whatever you want to call it. So, but I know that, this, that these false um, matrices, some of these fake ideologies, such as Islam, are not real true. Um, they're imposter programs, they're entity programs, and they're designed to take you down and destroy you. And you can tell by hearing what they say and watching what they do in the name of. And that's the biggest key factor right there. Um, that's why I always take it to the highest level of, of spirituality, which breaks down all the corridors and the barriers of judgment and persecution and all these other things that people get. They get they let their emotional bodies or their mental bodies get in the way. And a lot of it's indoctrination from from scripture that has actually been censored and edited to a point where it's not even real data. I mean, yeah. these are people that lied to you and they've been passing it off for decades and centuries and people are supposed to absorb it and use it. Yeah, you know? we had these for such a long time, the the scribes. Um, the priests during the Dark Ages uh, and beforehand had, you know, hundreds of years to edit and, uh, you know, the, the, um, the, the holy scriptures, if you will, the, the, the history scr uh, scrolls and the, the way things were written down is not the way uh, they were presented to the general masses when people mm -hmm. finally were able to have a possession of a book. <laughs> right. Exactly. Yeah, I know cosmic Christ. I know the Christ consciousness. I'm very familiar with that frequency, but I don't have a resonance with the, with the structured churches, you know. So that's that's the difference. You know, it's about ancient mystery schools beyond the word and, and alchemy of spirit and, and the mechanics behind it. We we're talking about frequency. It's really you have everything built into you from the cosmic design. So you have all the answers. It's a matter of journeying into that and accessing it and then going to the higher levels. And of course, it's nice to have guides and support systems. But a lot of the time I see those things as more like cults. And they pull people in and, and keep them skewed and programmed into a false matrix. And that's why I like to navigate outside that illusion so I can be like the spy bird and look and observe. Yeah, it's it's funny. You know, we've got we've got education school that teaches all the mundane physical things. And then we have our churches, which supposedly try to teach, uh, I guess you could call it a contained and uh, spirituality. But we really don't have... Uh, for you know our as we as, as for our children or for our young adults any real uh, introduction into nature and the earth and being in touch with you know the the spirit of the earth if you will and um, and that instinctual connection that we have to the universe that you see in older cultures like uh, the, the Native Americans or some of the other indigenous, you know, uh, in, in the aboriginals in Australia, they've all got a connection to the earth. Mm -hmm. And that's something that uh, we're very detached from in this modern age of, of, our, of our secular states. Mm -hmm. That's very true. Yeah, they're they're tuned into not only the Earth, but the but the um the universal life force energy that brings light to the Earth. In yeah. other words, it's the galactic energies. It's through the solar, you know, the the sun. I mean, for example, I mean the beautiful energies that that uh, navigate through the sun and the stargates. I mean, these energies they permeate onto this world and bring life to this world through the creator source energy, whatever you want to call it. These divine energies. But yeah. The, most people don't even know about that. They, they're not in tune. They haven't been taught. And a lot of it, um, unfortunately, I'd say that there are a lot of people in the craft area and other areas that have kind of give them a, given them a misperception. There's been a collision in education so that some people don't really understand what, what alchemy is, what mysticism is. And, and there needs to be clarity. Um, but that's why I always say spirituality, you know, be spiritual. You don't have to be any one religion. Be a good person. Have your heart open in higher consciousness. Be a good soul. Um, you know, be respectful. It's just little things, you know. That's the thing. I, I just I don't understand how people are not, you know, how, how they can be so just the the complete opposite of, you know, a, a respectable human being. <laughs> I mean, I, that, that, so so there are so many people right now that are wandering this globe that are so spiritually blind that have been so uh, taken in by, um, you know, the, the, the commercialism and the the materialism um, mm -hmm. that was projected by by the uh, the governments, um, 
Yeah, they're disconnected from source. You know, remember I was telling you about the Holy Grail? It's that Holy Spirit. If, if you don't have that within you, whatever you want to define it as, you're empty. It's an empty vessel. You know, yeah. they're enti- and then it's potential for entity control. So however that comes into play in your divinity, it's very significant. It really is. And, and I think that's what they're missing. They're missing the grail. You and know, uh, you know what? This world is, um, America was losing the grail too, by the way. Go ahead. Oh, I was just, you know, if, if you just, people should just take a few moments every once in a while to just sort of center themselves, you know, um, when I, one thing I, I used to do when I get, got upset, um, and I haven't done it in quite a while is I'd go out, uh, along this abandoned road that we have out here, especially in the summertime when it's like 90 degrees and, uh, I'll find a bunch of rocks and I will balance five stones high five times. So I have five sets of five stones high, you know, like you balance the rocks on top of each other. And that takes a lot of concentration to balance rocks on top of each other. Mm-hmm. And if I can actually do that under 90 degree heat, um, by the time I get to the final rock on the fifth one, uh, I have centered myself. And that's it works for me personally. But, um, you know, that's nice. it's just uh, something that I discover that I, I do on my my own uh, every once in a while and is just go out there and by myself and get in touch with nature and balance the stones. So it can be something as simple as that or standing in the grass barefoot. You know. mm-hmm. Yeah, absolutely. Or even Qigong exercises, Tai Chi. I like. To, I'm a martial artist, so I like to train. Um, yeah. And I have a lot of high energy. I'm, I'm very, um, not high strung, but I I'm definitely have a lot of energy. So I need to move my energy. I noticed when I was first plugged into that technology, I was running on the beach on Maui for like 10 miles a day and biking. And <laughs> I had so much energy. And the whole time they were driving me through the communication system. So it was like being having a drill sergeant. So I was just like training all the time. Mm. So. But yeah, I agree with you. I think that there are ways to, however it is that you want to um, channel your energy and, and reset your spiritual battery, so to speak. Yeah, that's a good way to do it. Yeah, I, I think that that's one thing that we're, we we miss in the modern age, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, and communication like you and I are having here on air, even though you're in a, you know, you're over there and I'm here, we're, we're having a resonance communication here. Um, a lot of people don't. I mean, they don't even know how to text right. I mean, this is ridiculous. I mean, I I don't get it, okay? I mean, the way people communicate today is very, very strange to me. And I think that's a foundation, once again, you know, we grew up in a different timeline. We grew up around where we didn't have all the cell phones and the computers. We had typewriters, and and, and that made a difference in who we are. Oh, absolutely. Uh, Yeah. I I remember when I had to go to the library to research for my report, you know, (laughs) even have an internet or anything. Yeah. I mean, I always rode my bike everywhere. I never had a cell phone in case the creep was around. I mean, of course, we didn't get creeps like nowadays. There are creeps everywhere. But, you know, when I was a kid, we'd go all over the place on our bikes. We never worried about people bothering us. Oh, yeah. Me too. Uh, Yeah. I mean, I used to. Yeah, the times have definitely changed. Mm -hmm. Um, It's almost sad for the kids because I wouldn't want to be a kid growing up today. I really wouldn't. I don't know how they can have, like you were saying, any type of spiritual foundation or any good side to them because they're constantly getting bombarded with evil. Yeah. So it's up to the parent, really. And where's the parent these days? Or, or where, you know, where are the role models? You can't look at Hollywood. Oh, that not, you know. Hollywood <laughs> and the media and the government are all intertwined. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Right. And that's that social engineering we were talking about. Yeah. And I, I just I don't trust any of these famous people anymore. Um, oh, no, I don't. As, where I've been after where I've been with them, the band. Oh, no, I, I had um, I didn't have any idea they were involved in that technology. I had no clue. So now I'm just like totally jaded when it comes to, unfortunately, I love music too. And it's kind of sad, but yeah, you know what? I know what you mean. I mean, it's like, I just don't look at any, I mean, any, almost any celebrity now. I'm like, if I don't know you, you know, you have to earn my trust. I mm-hmm. mean, I'll respect you as a human until you do something in my presence or I find out that it's dishonorable, but Ah, trust is something that's uh, <laughs> very hard. Well, you know, we, we have a good life when you realize that we are, it's almost good to be out of the perimeters of that overinflated ego and the, and the Hollywood scene and overpaid entertainers is what I call them, really, because they're not famous. And I don't consider them stars. Stars shine in the sky. These people aren't stars. They're overpaid entertainers. And most of them don't even have the, the type of sophistication they had back in the old days with the classic actresses and, and musicians. But, yeah, it's, it's just become a very different world. But you know, hold on to who you are because who you are is more significant. I mean, what you represent in light and consciousness, that goes for every person out there. Yeah. You know, don't, don't look to other people. I mean, look to yourself and just improve yourself as my, you know, that's what I say. That's the, that, that I totally agree. That's one thing that we we're teaching our kids or actually Madison Avenue and the 
is teaching our kids that what everybody else quote unquote likes is important. You know, uh, you have to post your status and make sure that all your fans and friends like everything you do. Um, and that I think is having a over a long period of time, a, a little bit of a psychological toll on the collective psyche of mm -hmm. our society, you know, where we all have to get approval by, uh, from strangers that we don't even know. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I've time. never been like that. And I'm so grateful. I'm not, I've always been anti-established even, yeah. even, I mean, as young as I can remember, I've always been my own spirit. So I'm glad about that. Oh, me too. What is that saying? What you think of me is none of my business. That's how, that's my motto. <laughs> uh, so we're winding it up we've got about uh about 10 minutes to go so if there's any last kind of things you wanted to talk about i just want to say I, I thank you so much mr Rowe. i have the greatest respect for who you are you know that um you've you've covered for me on my show raven stars witching hour i think you're a wonderful being uh, on so many levels very educated advanced and I, I just thank you for letting me jump on board here tonight and have a wonderful conversation with you i think you're just a wonderful person and being and i I'm happy to know you on the timeline. So I want to say thank you and thank the station. You know, we got to keep them. Um, I see this revolution radio sometimes as a pirate ship, you know, we're just out there and, you know, <laughs> I think I might've mentioned that to you before, but it just, you know, we were out there always, you know, just sailing on. So, so thanks. Well, I got to say, uh, I, I totally have the respect for you as well. And uh, I think we do resonate. Uh, we probably are, um, soul buddies from... <laughs> yeah, I always call you by evil twin, but you're not the evil one. And I'm not evil either. I don't know. My shadow twin. I don't know. It's, it's, yeah, you're definitely connected on some level. It's perspective. For, for, for some folks, we're both evil, you know, but the, but they're evil to us too. So. Oh, God, they used to call me the daughter of Satan and everything else. I mean, you know, just because I was different. Yeah, well, yeah, I've had a few choice uh, titles given to me as well in the past. <laughs> I'm actually a good one. You know, I, I'm, I'm actually the one that scares people in the mystery schools and the craft. I mean, witches are scared of me. So I'm just a different thing. I'm just very different. Very, very different. Well, that's good. You, you've got, yeah. Um, yeah, significance in the or in the great order of things, I believe. You know, you can yeah, just stay steady in the light, stay steady in higher consciousness. And, you know, I just call it as I see it, just like you do. I, I tell the truth. You know, I try to be as honest as I can. And of course, nowadays, I didn't realize that honesty was something that they shun. So. Uh, oh, now they're I mean, well, you know, now we've got the the entire war on what we're supposed to think is is reality, you know, and the, mm -hmm. supposedly the government is going to come out and protect us all with this uh, new fake news kind of thing. And. And the scary part about, you know, putting it under NDAA is, is technically they could say, well, you know, you said something. And so now you're classified as a, a, a war criminal or whatever and mm -hmm. um, get the FISA court involved. Um, and, 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 you know, the, I don't see this day coming, but they would like to see it come where they could come up to you and say, well, you're being convicted for a crime but due to national security, we can't tell you what the crime is. It's Minority Report 101. <laughs> and and that exists, ladies and mm -hmm. gentlemen. They actually do have that. If you're lucky enough to, to fall under that, you can literally be charged um, in a secret court, and they can't tell you anything because it's all under national security. Um, now, I haven't personally seen a story where a guy has gone to jail. Maybe there has been. I, I don't know if they've set that precedent yet but this is they're laying the foundation for mm -hmm. that and, and they're also using electronic jails now so the type of technology i was exposed to that's a type of prison by the way it's an electronic prison it's a frequency fence prison so um, a lot of the time instead of the old-fashioned jails and prisons and re-education camps you know in the old days they put you in a camp somewhere nowadays they can interconnect you with the with the technology and that's your prison that's a prison for you wow. uh, just so you know in, um and yeah so in, in in conjunction with, uh, they were talking about a drug that they could give you that would make time seem to slow down um, so that using electronic prison or at the same time with a drug that makes you think a day is a month or something like that, mm -hmm. um, that could really, I mean, that could drive a person mad, um, you know. Yes, it's. Yeah, I agree with you. Well, it's totally out of resonance with what we are as multidimensional beings. I mean, it's not in resonance with our, our natural life force. So whenever you have something that's foreign in your body, like what I went through with the toxicity, I, I was getting very sick. I didn't tell anybody on air how sick I was with my lungs, but I was getting very sick. My doctor couldn't figure it out, and they kept putting me on steroids. And, um, and I went 
accidentally talking to a friend of mine who has a buddy who's special forces, very high ranking mm -hmm. with connections to DC. And he said immediately, because he had survived something with a radi radiation sickness, he said, that's exactly what you have. And he put me on a specific diet for this. And within four months time, most of it's gone. Okay. Well, so I just wanted to share that with you because you guys have to understand that this stuff is real and it's a killer. Okay. Um, and you have to navigate. And even if you're, you're sending light to your body, you have to pay attention to what's happening here on the timeline. There are war crimes being happening here and that we have to address these things. And, I, and I'm glad that we we're able to do this, Mr. Rowe. I'm glad that I'm here to be able to address some of this stuff. So thank you for letting me do that. And also the station. Um, oh, so, yeah, yeah. It's, it's an honor to have you on. And uh, you're definitely going to have to come back. Certainly. Uh, so. And you as well, obviously, I'm going to have you back on my show. You know that. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Mutual admiration society. Yeah. But uh, yeah, I think the next stage is we're we're moving into the 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 uh, that layman has now begun to get access to technology that we can use to counteract this. You know, for such a long time, uh, this stuff has been deep black, and there's still a lot of it that you know there's very very difficult for someone to get a hold of or measure. But I think we're right at the beginning of being able to identify this with specialized equipment, with people that know what they're looking for. Um, and that's the next stage is to be able to start identifying this stuff. First, I think, is to is if people have the issue, they're being harassed electronically and we have a way to measure it, to benchmark these measurements so that we know what we're looking for so that next time, uh, you know, we, we don't have to wait for someone to come and say, oh, let's measure to see if this is happening. You know, there are people out there maybe that can go out there and find it and nullify it. Mm -hmm. Right. And of course, on my documentary, I show the implant analysis scan that was done by Steve Colburn. And um, you can actually see the signals and, and you can see um, the Gauss meter and everything else. So, yeah, there are ways to do that. And that was a different formula that he used. But there are so many different ways to check for these things. And I, um, I, I love what you're saying there, because I do think that we have somebody like President Trump elect President Trump who can actually address this. I think we can get his attention on this and we can liberate an awful lot of people and prevent a lot of people from getting pulled into very, very bad programs. Oh, I, I totally agree. And we have a couple minutes left, so go ahead and tell everybody about how they can get your books, when you're on the air, and all that good stuff. Okay, my books are on Amazon.com, and thank you again, Mr. Rowe. And um, and Raven Star's Witching Hour, make sure you tune in 12 midnight Eastern Standard Time over here at Revolution Radio, freedomslips.com, and Studio A, and that's 12 midnight on, on Saturday night. I have Dan Willis who's going to join me, by the way. So, um, yeah, and then my, my website is Night Shadow Anomaly Detect, as you can access that. And you also posted my other one, which is Solaris Blue Raven, so... People can find me. All right. And you also, don't you have, uh, aren't you on? Hyperspace. Hyperspace. Yeah, I do have Hyperspace on KCOR on Friday nights at um, 12 May night Eastern Standard Time as well. So you can tune in over there. If you miss one show, you can catch another one. Lots of options. Okay. Yeah. Right on. Well, well, thank you again. Thank you very much. And uh, we've just maybe got a minute or two to go. So I do want to say have a very happy weekend. And it's been a pleasure again to have you on. And, uh, if there's any last words or you want to get out there, I'll let you take this on out. Oh, you're so sweet. Well, I just want to say once again, thank you again. And thank you, everybody, who support my work. And uh, you have wonderful people over here who listen and tune into your show. I just want to thank everybody and, and tell everybody to stay strong and stay stay connected to your higher self over Soul Superconscious. Stay, stay connected to that pillar of light within. And don't let these SOBs bring you down. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, I mean, there's a, it's just a lot of stuff going on out in the news. But... Um, I think uh, I th I've got a I've got a good feeling we're going to go in. Um, you know, it it might be a little bit bumpy. Um, I'm still not putting it uh, past these asses to do some sort of false flag in an act of desperation. Mm -hmm. But yeah, I, that's what I'm concerned about. Yeah. Yeah, I think they know though that they, I think they've also been warned because you know these factions that are at war, um, they. Uh, they play hot and heavy um, on both sides, you know. So just because we don't see any overt um, raw, uh, how can I word this, overt, uh, well, I guess I'll have to wait for another time. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you again. Thank Thanks. you, everybody. All right. Thank you, everybody, and have a great weekend. Ciao, ciao.
Christian Radio at freedomslips.com. We'll be right back after this message. The original machine had a base plate of prefamulated amulite surmounted by a malleable logarithmic casing in such a way that the two spurving bearings were in a direct line with a panometric fan. The lineup consisted simply of six hydrocoptic marzal veins, so fitted to the ambifacient lunar wane shaft that side fumbling was effectively prevented. The main winding was of the normal lotus o deltoid type placed in panendermic semi-boloid slots of the stator, every seventh conductor being connected by a non-reversible tremie pipe to the differential girdle spring on the up end of the gram meters. Thank you for listening to Revolution Radio, taking the confusion out of transmutated lunar girdle springs for four years and running. Revolution Radio, the number one listener-supported alternative media radio on the planet. Enjoy your extra big-ass fries. You didn't give me no fries. I got an empty box. Would you like another extra big-ass fries? I said I didn't get any. Thank you. Your account has been charged. Your balance is zero. Please what? come back when you can afford oh, to make no, a purchase. No. I'm sorry you're having trouble. Come on. Trouble. I'm My sorry you're starving. having trouble. Thank you for tuning in to Revolution Radio. Here at Revolution Radio, we believe in freedom of ideas, freedom of speech, but above all, we believe in freedom of existence through self-reliance. This station is 100% listener-supported, and as a fundraising promotion, I have a kick-ass free gift for a $100 donation. 